movie theater workers in Manhattan, in one Manhattan theater in particular, have decided that it's time for them to unionize. And that is sparking off discussions of other movie theater workers around the country about maybe unionizing as well. As a matter of fact, the one union uh, in Manhattan, or not the union, but the theater workers in Manhattan voted to join the local auto workers union. I think it's the local 2179. I think that's the one that it is. And, and they voted and it got ratified and they're going to unionize. Now, one might ask the question, why do movie theater workers need to unionize? It actually gets connected to Barbenheimer. Mm -hmm. Now, Barbenheimer happened and it was great for the theaters. It packed all the theaters, all that kind of stuff. But apparently, as is common for a lot of movie theaters, they understaffed, which puts a lot of pressure on the people working there. And if you've ever been to a movie theater, you have most likely seen a customer berating and pretty much abusing movie theater staff. I you really should apologize for that. <laughs> I had a little too much to drink. <laughs> I'm sorry. Anyway, this comes to us from the Associated Press that write the following. But for some employees at the Alamo Draft House in Manhattan, Barbenheimer was the breaking point. That really pushed us to the edge, said Maggie Quick, a guest attendant. It was just the constant understaffing and the emotional exhaustion. People were waiting longer than usual for their food, and that makes them short-tempered and impatient, recalls Tyler Trotman, a shift leader. We're the ones facing customers. It takes a toll, a mental toll to be yelled at by guests because their drink has been taking an hour. Now look, under a lot of circumstances, I would probably be saying, oh, boo-hoo, your job comes with some stresses. Oh, boo-hoo, grow up. But I've seen the way some of these kids, and they're not all, but a lot of them are kids. I've seen the way firsthand, the way some of these kids get treated by patrons because there's not enough butter on their popcorn, because the hot dog isn't hot enough, or I've been waiting 10 minutes for my stuff. And granted, I've been in movie theaters on busy nights where it's been like, without a word, shadow of, uh, of exaggeration, at the AMC Burbank 16, and they do normally have great management there. I'm not trying to disparage the management at the AMC Burbank 16, but I've been there where there have literally been 70 people in line and out of the nine registers, like three of them were open. And people get there, you know, you already have AMC with this bullshit stuff of playing a half hour of trailers beforehand. So people try to show up a little bit late and whatever, that should be reasonable. But all of a sudden now they're in a line to get a soda for 25, 35 minutes. And now they're risking missing their start time. Listen, I'm not saying that gives people the right to take it out on some kid working at a counter, just doing their job. But these kids, a lot of them are kids. Some of them are elderly, are the ones who have to take the brunt while the management and the owners of these theaters don't have to deal with it. Eh, we'll save 75 bucks if we don't put little Eddie on that night too and just let Susie and Marky deal with it by themselves. And it's one of those strange things to me, again, that I often see happen in movie theaters where, listen, I get it. It's a razor thin margin business. You got to be wise with how you spend your money, but making sure you're staffed properly on what you know are going to be big nights is only going to be good for your business because it makes the movie going experience better for your patrons. You understaff, you're not just putting stress on your kids, you're putting stress on the, the people coming to your movie theaters who are now having a negative experience all because you wanted to save an extra 75, 150, 200 bucks that night. And it's kind of short-sighted. So I listen, I gotta tell you, if I hadn't seen it for myself, I'd be going, why are movie theater workers unionizing? But I've seen it and you've seen it. And I kind of get it. And honestly, Rob, I think this is something that's going to go wide. Guys, we want to take a second to thank a sponsor of today's video, Quip. Guys, good health starts with good habits. And Quip makes taking care of your oral health easy by delivering all the oral care essentials that you need to care for your mouth. They've got an incredible electric toothbrush with time sonic vibrations with 30 second pulses to guide a dentist recommended two minute clean. Guys, it's my favorite toothbrush I've ever owned. And who likes flossing? I don't, but this water flosser hits all the right spots with gentle or deep cleaning pressure at the touch of a button. But guys, then there was an additional surprise. 
surprise. Quip also supplies mints and gums that are fantastic. Every time you pop one of their new mints, you'll be caring for your mouth inside and out. Bold mint flavor keeps your breath confidently fresh and you'll get a boost of vitamin D. And their gum prevents cavities and freshens breath when chewed for like 20 minutes after eating. It's sugar-free, is tooth-friendly, and has zero calories. So guys, if you go to getquip.com slash campia right now, you'll get 20% off any electric toothbrush, mint and gum dispenser, and water flosser. That's your 20% off any electric toothbrush, mint and gum dispenser, water floss at getquip.com slash campia. Spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash campia. Quip, the good habits company. I think in a year from now, it's going to be pretty common to find out more areas, more uh, zones in the North American box office are going to start unionizing with their theater workers. I don't know you heard about this. What do you think? Well, I, I've kind of I'm kind of of two minds about this, John. On one hand, you know, movie theaters need all the help they can get, but on the other hand, they make predominantly the most amount of money with their refreshments with hundred percent. They you know whether yeah. it's sodas, whether it's so I would think that and and to anticipate. The rush, you know, restaurants anticipate a rush. And when you have, uh, I, I quite enjoy the Alamo Draft House, and they provide a premium service in addition to just having a refreshment stand. You can order food in. They actually have a real restaurant there where they're cooking foods for people. So that takes a long time. And when you're in New York City, there's uh, it's it's heightened. And it's all polite people in New York City. Like, we know that for a fact, right? All yeah, the politest it's... people in the world. So on one hand, movie theaters are, are, are hanging by a thread. But on the other hand, if you say you're going to provide a service to your patrons, you have to provide that service. That's, that's a minimum expectation of the business that you're running. And like you said, people who are retired are going back to work, so they have something to do working in movie theaters, and it's younger kids. It's a great entry-level position, and there aren't as many entry-level jobs as there used to be. Movie theaters are a great place to work because you have a crew of people. You learn a certain set of social skills and political skills, so it's a great place to work. It's a fun place to work, and you get free movie, movies. Um, so I think that fighting for a fair wage is not ever a bad thing. And I just hope that movie theaters look at it as a way to, it's a way to increase the product that they're giving to the public. Let's make the experience better. AMC's certainly done that with their projection. Yeah. And yeah, they their have. seating. They spent the billions of dollars to do that. And now what you need to do, don't forget the people that are the first line of defense to make sure your patrons have a great experience. I want to address a couple of things a few people in our live audience are, are mentioning. Isaac Cushman makes a very great point that I think we can all identify with. He says this, more employees equals more products sold. I have given up on concessions before because the line took so long to move. Yeah. They, they're literally missing out on sales by not putting, you know, it's being penny wise, dollar foolish. Uh, also, Marcus Y writes, well, why can't people just order ahead in the app? Listen, I do order ahead in the app. There have been many times I have ordered ahead on the app and said, okay, you know, my movie starts at seven, your, your th product, your food will be ready at 6.55. And at 6.55, I'm standing there at the shelf where they're supposed to put up my order. Seven, 7.05, 7.10, 7.15 comes. And it's just that they got slammed with people in line. It doesn't come through. They've got, the union isn't necessarily about, the workers here aren't necessarily asking for higher wages. Like, I'm sure they do want higher wages, but the main thing they seem to be is like, just staff us properly. Instead of five people on a busy shift, put seven people on a busy shift. It, it's reasonable. And also, you know, coordinating online orders is a whole other skill set that's yes, involved. It is. So there's, there's, it's not just, it's like every other job, the, the digital age has made it so we have to do 10 different things, but when before we only did five. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Make sure you like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget, we have a daily podcast called the John Campy Show podcast available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app of choice. Go and subscribe to it today so it'll be there when you need it.